Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. I've work been working on this part here, uh, which is made out of 4140, which is an alloy steel, which is definitely the hardest stuff that I've uh, had to machine. Uh, it's considerably more difficult, in my experience, to machine than 1018. Uh, it's just less forgiving and really difficult to cut. The recipe I've been using um, has been 16 to 1700 RPMs at 5 inches per minute with about 20 thou depth of cut. Uh, that's I think about a, a little about seven tenths of a thou chip load. Um, I'm using, as you can see here, a four flute carbide quarter inch end mill that's made by a company called All Tracks. And actually, I can show you. Um, here is the actually that's the PIN coded one. I've been using non coded ones here. Um, these are not. Um, these are not cheap for me. These are about seven or eight dollars a piece from Enco. But I think when you're cutting this type of material, it is important to use good quality bits. Um, so, and so just a quick comment compared to um, 1018, where on my steel, where on my tag, tag, I've been able to cut that at uh, about twice the uh, material amount, be it a little bit faster RPMs and uh, I think about double the speed. Uh, the inches per minute. Anyways, what I wanted to show you was an interesting thing that I learned, um, which is that the when I'm cutting 4140 on my tag, it actually seems to like uh, when profiling or pocketing to take almost a full pass um, or a step over with the bit. In other words, uh, in my CAD software, the default is normally to, 50, to take a 50% cut over, which means every pass it steps over half the uh, distance first. So, for in the instance of a quarter inch end mill, that's 0.125 or one eighth of an of an inch. But that seems to put a lot of stress on the mill, which you can hear manifest itself in chatter and just the jerkiness and, and the sound. Um, so, what I've been doing is doing about a 70 or 80 percent step over, which seems to um, run much smoother, quieter, less vibration. And I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that. That allows uh, four of the flutes, or three of the flutes, probably to be engaged, versus perhaps just two. I'm just thinking that that it may be what makes sense. Anyways, um, the interesting development I found was that I was milling out this area you see here uh, tonight, and I had already drilled the three holes from the other side, and I actually used the center hole here with the dial test indicator to center the re-zero the part. And as you can see, there are these three little ridges. So what I wanted to do was uh, talk a little bit about why those ridges were there and then use my uh, granite block with a dial indicator to look at the uh, amount they were off. Whenever cutting um, steel on a tank or any sort of a mill which doesn't have the same amount of rigidity and inevitably has some backlash, it's very important that you don't climb cut. You need to conventional mill. So the bit here on my mill turns this way. And so, because it's turning that way, which would be a clockwise direction, you need to cut a pocket from the outside in. You need to come this way. And what that's going to do is allow it to, well, actually, it's tough because um, it depends on what your material you're consider, cu considering cutting. Since I'm leaving a high face here, the reason I have to go uh, clockwise is that otherwise, when I'm, if I were to climb mill it against this back face, when I reach the end here, um, it would it would catch from the backlash and jerk. As you can see, that's what happened over here when the part was flipped and I was climb milling on a trickier part. Um, anyways, what happened was that when the um, bit was moving along this area here, it had a full passive material to take, or about. Uh, in this instance, because this is the, it went from the outside in, it was taking 100% uh, width of cut. When it got to the drill bit, it didn't have that full amount, and that pushed some deflection into the tool. And what happened was, along these points, I have a little hump or a little deflection. Um, so what, what I want to do, and this, this part has already been loosened up, is I want to take it over here to my granite block plate and measure it, see what that did. Here's a quick look at the part, though. As you can see, there's not a lot of material, material removed, and even though this 4140 has been really tough to cut, um, I've been really happy with how my tag has done it. 
However, um, I do have some backlash in both my Y and uh, X axis, which I need to tend to quick shortly. So this is my granite block plate, which has a built-in uh, dial indicator. This was uh, an Enco Fire Sale product. I think it was um, something like $27 with free shipping, including the block and the uh, indicator, which is really a, a pretty good deal, even though it's a, an import quality indicator. Um, it has two screws here, which allow you to position the height of the indicator, and you can do pretty cool stuff about it with it. Uh, one of the things I like to do is, is just this, which is, um, I want to measure the deflection in these three uh, bumps or grooves here. Um, I've got a approximately solid edge here, which is important. Obviously, you need this reference edge here that's on the granite block to be smooth for this to work. So all that I'm going to do, which I'm going to lower this a little to get a better reading, set this up here. And if you can see as I move it around, the indicator's not moving too much. These uh, tick marks are one thousandth of an inch. Um, some indicators are half a thou, some are one ten thou. So what I'm going to do is scoot the dial down so it zeroes it out. And you know, it's plus or minus a thou, and that could be a lot of things. The quality of the indicator, vibrations, and um, cut quality here, as well as any intricacies on the uh, bottom face, but close enough here. So what I'll do is I'll now run it over and you can see it peaks at 9 thou and then comes back down. So let's see if the middle one's the same. Yep, maybe 8 and a half thou. Yeah, about 9 thou, yeah. And then the third one I would expect to be the same. Bingo. So, for this particular part, it shouldn't actually be a problem. There are some ways you could fix it, whether taking different type of cuts uh, with the bit this way or chucking it up this way. Um, certainly an interesting lesson. I wasn't necessarily expecting this, and I have to think that it was uh, attributable or certainly magnified by the fact that I've got some backlash in my uh, lead screw nuts right now. But um, uh, just a quick example of how you can uh, help fix this problem and one also how you can measure it using a block plate.